Hello, community! Today, renormalization for a multimodal retrieval for our AI systems, and we have a brand new study. Here, really, the last day of October 2024, we have a study by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Stanford University. And I've chosen this study because I want to show you that there are also simple ideas that have an effect currently in AI research. And I think this is a beautiful example talking about here the nearest neighbor normalization. And this normalization technique improves here our multimodal retrieval. Let's have a look what we are talking about. The authors tell us here, okay, so we tested here a different set here of multimodal uh, elements and clip, blip, and so let's have a look. If you're new to this, what are they? Now you see, they are two, three years old. So blip, for example, here, bootstrapping language image pre-training for unified vision language understanding and generation from Salesforce, or we go here with align the image and text representation before fusing through a cross-modal attention here by Salesforce, or we go here with Google DeepMind, Sigmoid loss for language image pre-training functionalities, or we go here with Microsoft, the BERT pre-training of image transformer, vision transformers. But of course, you know Clip, no? This is here from OpenAI, imagine 2021, my goodness. He learning transferable visual models from natural language supervision. Now, you know that the beauty of Clip, it was trained here on a massive data set of image caption pairs, over 400 million got it from the web, and it consists of three components. And this is now important because this helps us to understand the new insight here by MIT and Stanford University. At first, simplest presentation I can think of is we have an image encoder. So this encodes our images into a shared high-dimensional mathematical feature space. And then we have a text encoder, and this encodes the text description into the same high-dimensional mathematical feature space as the images are already there. And then we have what we call a contrastive learning objective. This simply means that we train the model by maximizing here the similarity between correct image text pairs, and we minimize the similarity between incorrect pairs. Couldn't be easier, no? Now, just to show you that Clip as a basis is really popular, and although it's three years old, I have here the latest research here, beginning of October 2024 from Apple, and they still work here on the basis of Clip, and they say we propose a new pre-training methodology, contrastive localized language image pre-training, by complementing Clip with region text contrastive loss and modules. So, Clip is still there, and people are building on Clip for advanced models. Clip of, of course, available for you here in this GitHub repo. And since it is so old, <laughs> we, you can simply ask any AI model to give you an overview of Clip, Blip, or whatever model you want, the key approach, the architecture, and what is the important feature. So those models are really our workhorses that we operate with, and Stanford and MIT also use them here as the base models. So we today, we find now a new solution or even multiple solution because we are facing problems and you know these problems. We have a bias and an efficiency challenge here, especially if we have multimodal retrieval task. So let's talk about this multimodal retrieval task here. They are now all in a shared embedding space. So both the image encoder and the text encoder produce now embeddings that exist within the same high-dimensional mathematical space. And we have a cross-modal retrieval. So by embedding now the images and the text in the same space, Clip enables here a text-to-image and an image-to-text retrieval. And this is what we are looking at. And now this latest research here introduces here a nearest neighbor normalization as a new methodology to enhance the retrieval accuracy of multimodal AIs without additional training. And this is the beauty. We have no additional training or fine tuning or whatever cycle. We can do this here with a simple, let's call it a trick. The problem we are facing is that Unlike traditional contrastive methods that often lead to hubness, this means certain images become 
automatically the nearest neighbor for a multiple of unrelated queries. This new methodology, this nearest neighbor normalization, NNN, works by adjusting the retrieval score based on the k nearest neighbors in a reference dataset. So here we have the problem, the problem is happiness, and we have the solution, NNN, by applying this methodology. Let's have an example. A very simple example, imagine a library, where some books are frequently recommended for any search term. Those are the hot topics, you know, due to popularity, rather than their specific relevance to the topic. And now NNN works like a clever librarian who suggests books that match here specific search terms, relying here on a subset of highly relevant references to make here much more specific recommendation, rather than go here with the general popularity of some books. And we will focus here, what does it mean to have a subset of highly relevant references for the job to be done? Now, the authors came up with some key assumptions, some hypotheses here to make the model work. So, let's start here with existing multimodals, like I showed you clip and blip, suffer from the happiness problem, especially dealing with diverse and large data set. So, the retrieval accuracy can be improved without the model retraining by utilizing now this reference databases and adjusting the scores. Plus, they want to achieve a sublinear time complexity. Now, this would be nice, no? Sublinear time. How they do it? It is three simple steps. You have the query and the candidate matching. So, for a given query of our multimodal models, the system calculates here matching scores with all the reference database candidates. Then, a bias score is calculated for each candidate simply by averaging its top k nearest neighbor scores from this reference database. So the average represents here the inherent popularity bias of this particular local candidate. And then we just have an adjustment of a parameter. So the final retrieval score parameter is the original score parameter minus the computed bias score, thus correcting here for the local hubness. And you see here this reference database is so important because this provides here a very simple correction term, a normalization term. So this reference database is essential for the calculation, plus it improves the retrieval accuracy by having a better score and it reduces the computational costs because NNN only uses the k nearest neighbor from the reference database keeping here the computations real fast and real efficient. Now, you see the main idea is simple, a reference database. And you might say, unbelievable that we have such a simple, beautiful idea, and it has a beautiful effect here on the performance on our multimodal models. Okay, so, again, green grasshoppers, how do we apply the reference database? We retrieve the nearest neighbor. So for each retrieval candidate, this is an image or a caption. Now this new methodology NNN identifies the K nearest neighbor in the reference database based on similarity scores. And remember, similarity scores because this will become important. Then we calculate the bias score for each candidate by averaging, simple averaging the similarity score for these K nearest neighbors. And this new score represents now a general preference or a bias towards this particular candidate, independent of any specific query. And then we just have a score adjustment. And this adjustment is easy. It is just subtracting this bias score from the original similarity score. That's it. It can be that beautiful. Now, talking about the results, it shows that this new NNN methodology improves, really improves the retrieval accuracy across different models, across different data sets, and you find a lot of analysis, numerical analysis of the performance in this study. Please have a look at the study, and it often outperforms alternatives like DB norm or QB norm. So therefore, NNN reduces here the retrieval score of hub images which have a high matching score with a broad range of unrelated caption, thereby enhancing here the performance and the specificity of our queries. So, 
This is now great, because now we have a renormalis a simple renormalization methodology with the help of our reference database. And you see, you have to get this reference database right, because this is the main point where you build here your correction terms, your normalization terms. So you really have to make sure that whatever your query is, your query is really part here, or there are references here to this database. Otherwise, you are in, the, in deep trouble. So primary takeaway of this research is that score normalization using only k nearest neighbors can really mitigate the retrieval bias in contrastive multimodal models. Improving now the beauty is both the performance and the fairness in application reducing the bias like image search and visual question answering. So whenever you have this visual question answering form a multimodal or cross model, this is the way to go. Now, there is something beautiful because NNN, as I told you, achieves here this localized renormalization. So correcting here for a bias in a way that generalizes well across different types of queries and candidates. And this is beautiful for the, if you want, this is a real fast calculation and we achieve sublinear complexity for the computational complexity because it does not run through the complete database, but we are working here with a localized renormalization methodology. So you see, a simple idea, easy implementation, but can have beautiful results. Now the author tells us, hey, future research, what is it? They went here with the self-attention models, but they say, hey, we can adapt this for the cross-attention models. So modifying now our NNN methodology to work much more efficiently here with the cross-attention mechanism. And especially if we have applications where we have no standard reference set or database, how do we generate here the quotation mark, perfect reference database so we can apply our methodology. So how do we build here this data set that will be our reference equilibrium? But of course, you see here, this is not only the theoretical study by MIT and Stanford University, because they also published here their complete code on everything that they are talking about just two days ago. And as you see, we have here an MIT license, beautiful. So go there if you are interested in this. And if you are working with multimodal retrieval models, I think this is really a fast and elegant and a beautiful solution if you have this as your main jobs. But of course, you noticed that we just apply kind of a trick, no? We did not solve the problem real on its deeper root cause, but we just say, hey, let's think we have the golden data set. And then in this golden data set, we can compute a correction term, a normalization term. And then we apply this normalization term from the reference database in our real world query. And if there is this consistency between the golden data set and the, in your real query, everything is beautiful. But of course, it would be much more interesting to have a real deep dive why we have this phenomenon of hubness in high dimensional mathematical spaces, especially in embeddings. Now, just to give you an idea, we are talking, if, I don't know if you're familiar with the course of dimensionality. This is a term from years ago, but it simply means that the property of data in distant matrix changes as the dimensionality of our mathematical embedding spaces increases. So we're working here with 768 or 1024 dimensional or 2048 dimensional mathematical spaces. This means that in high dimensional spaces, the distribution of pairwise distances between points becomes tightly concentrated around a mean value. So this means that the most points tend to have similar distances to each other, making it much harder to distinguish between them now based on the distance alone. Plus, as the dimensionality increases further, the angles between those random vectors tend also to be really small, making most embedding similar if we calculate here the cosine similarity terms. So, in addition, we have another beautiful problem, and it tells us here, in high dimensional spaces, there is now a new statistical property known as the asymptotic equipartitioning. This is suddenly appearing. 
So if you want to have a deep dive why we have this topic of happiness in our multimodal models, yeah, there might be a real solution, a real understanding why is this happening, how can we improve our embedding functionalities, or how do we have to build our embedding vector spaces in a much clever way that hardness, for example, is not even happening in the first place, and therefore we do not have to calculate correction terms, normalization and renormalization terms for hardness. I hope I've given you a little insight into real latest research from two beautiful institutions, MIT and Stanford University. And you see where the researchers over there are currently working and what are the problems that they are trying to solve for the real world application of artificial intelligence. I hope you enjoyed it and it would be great to see you in my next video.